and welcome to Croydon Conversations. My name is Catherine Glass and today I'm joined by Rommel Feitaran who is a director at Optivo whose head office is based here in Croydon. Hi Rommel. Hi good afternoon Catherine. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing very well thank you. Uh, right. Love the environment. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, so Rommel uh, tell me a little bit about um, your role uh, at uh, Optivo. You're the director of commercial services. That, that's correct, yes. So I'm, I oversee the commercial portfolio um, of Optivo. Um, we account for probably about 9% of um, core business. So Optivo is a housing association, 44,000 homes um, operating in Midlands, London, Kent and Sussex. Um, so Croydon is one of our key boroughs. Um, so we do a lot of um, affordable rents and some open market sale. Uh, properties and, and some affordable rent and social housing. Um, in terms of commercial portfolio, we do have some offices as well as some, some retail in the borough. So you are, you are actually an occupier, you also as own well. some offices as well. How many people do you actually employ in the borough? So in, in well, Optivo employ about 1,100, I'd say probably a third um, of them actually um, work in our head office in Croydon. Okay, and how long has um, Optivo been in Croydon? Do you know? So we, okay, so um, no, it Optivo. If you don't, don't worry. Yeah, so so, <laughs> so um, I've been with the business for about um, just over fifteen years, and so we started the first South London Family Housing Association. So we were based um, by Luna House at the rear, Abbeminster, um, so Sydenham Road, um, and. So South London Family Housing Association merged a number of times and we've probably done four major mergers uh, since 2005 and in 2017 we became Optivo um, but we merged Amicus Horizon with um, Viridian Housing mm -hmm. uh, so we formed then the 44,000 home um, organisation. Okay great so um, as a housing association um, as a housing association based in Croydon, clearly we're, we're in, we are in unprecedented times. Um, there are lots going on that none of us could have foreseen. Uh, what sort of impact is that having on you as a business, but also your tenants? Um, you know, how, are, how are you actually coping uh, with what's going on at the moment here in Croydon and in the world? Well, and to be honest, remarkably well, considering the, the challenges that COVID um, has brought along with it um, nationally and internationally. Um, you know, as a housing association, you know, our core business is social housing. So we have many vulnerable uh, residents, either in single house households or large families. Um, so when we went into lockdown um, in, in March, our focus was about how do we maintain services safely and, um, you know, to, to the 44,000 households that we have across and the southeast and so the, the impact um kind of operation and think it's become you know a really big shock for us is how we provide our services in a much more um kind of distance way um so initially one of the, the biggest thing that we had to do is how do we maintain our repair services emergency ones in a safe way and and that resulted in us actually thinking about you know which services are I'm going to have to start this over again, Catherine. I have <laughs> lost it. I was looking at something. Is that is that the light? Or is that my computer? I'm sorry. About that. So could you ask? Could you ask a question? <laughs> um, okay, yeah. so I'll ask, I'll ask the question again. Um, so we're we are. Um, so we're in unprecedented times here uh, and in Croydon and in, in the whole world with what yeah. we're all facing. Um, how has yeah. this impacted uh, both Optivo as a company, but I guess more importantly, the, the residents that you look after? Yeah. So as, as a housing association, um, biggest impact for us is the way that we work, the way that, that we, uh, we operate. Um, you know, I think uh, kind of the, the major impact for us was in lockdown and um, the scaling back everything we're doing um, and how, how, how did we go about doing things like development, um, investment projects, uh, all the cyclical works, compliance, um, you know, and continue to provide a service to, to our residents. So kind of picking up on, on Octavo, how it's impacted us. Many of our staff have had to work remotely and that's um, continued, I think, as a business. Um, we actually see the benefit 
or being able to work flexibly as we, we do. We've not seen such a huge dip in, in our um, KPIs, um, you know, which is, is, is quite reassuring. I think the arrangements that we have in the interim will almost certainly become probably something that we commit to in the long term in terms of our flexible working policy as a business. Um, what we have seen, I think, over the period of three uh, to six months is that as we've um, adopted a new way of working and so have residents welcomed it. And the one thing that I think that's able to kind of bridge those challenges is the way that one, our communication strategy has been delivered and, and having the infrastructure, digital infrastructure to allow you know, the services to be provided, um, to still be accessible um, and to, to, you know, in, in situations where we have to visit residents, like things like emergency repairs, mm -hmm. that we are able to work remotely, uh, so not remotely, in, in a safe way, making sure they've yeah. got PPEs um, and effectively, you know, uh, having our contractors and residents working together to make sure that we are compliant with, with, with COVID rules. So, you know, from the residents' perspective, obviously they're not able to come in. Um, we restrict the number of repairs and um, urgent and minor repairs that we could do, only focused on emergency. Um, and, you know, we're catching up now with, with the stuff that we'd, 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 we'd deferred. Um, but having said that, like I said, I think communication has been a big, big factor. Um, I think there was a lot of confusion, even from organisations, about the communications um, uh, that came out from government about how you know what mitigations need to be in place um, and so we we felt that it was our job to make sure that we translated what that meant for them um so so yeah i mean for us i think really positive um no, no impact on kpis we have had some additional costs um particularly on um, our offices because as, as we start to come back on limited cap capacity of 20 25 percent we needed to invest in COVID safe requirements, screen sanitizer, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, but overall, you know, the, the, you know, we, we've, uh, I think, maintained service in the best way possible. And we're going to, you know, essentially, I think, expedite our digital kind of transformation in the next phase mm -hmm. to enable us to take the opportunity that COVID has provided um, to do things much more efficiently and easier for our residents. Okay, so just talking about those residents, um, you know, as a housing association, you obviously have an obligation to, in normal times, uh, to work with them, to encourage them into employment. Um, you know, how, that must have differed enormously. There must be many, many of your residents currently yeah. impacted um, through job losses and other circumstances. You know, what measures can Optivo, uh, what are you doing to support them, not just in Croydon, yeah. but across the portfolio? Yeah. So the so we've done this in, in, in two phases. So our social impact team have been highly involved um, in our response to, to COVID. So we've had to kind of repurpose uh, what social impact team used to, to do, which is to do a lot of training, but kind of face to face and support yeah. people into to jobs and, and training opportunities. And we've done a great job of that working partnerships, uh, including, um, you know, recording council and other businesses mm -hmm. um, locally um, in the borough. Um, the, the, the one thing that we did do initially from lockdown was not to really prioritise, you know, that service um, in, in the way that we, we did with everything else. We just moved the digitalization offer. What we did, uh, in fact, was use that team then to lead the approach in supporting residents who are vulnerable and who, who was going to be in, impacted in lockdown so a lot of reassurance calls mm -hmm. um as you can imagine you know 44,000 homes translates to probably 90,000 residents so yeah. a lot yeah. of calls to, to make um remobilizing you know relaxation of the rules in july in, in july um meant that actually we could look at social impact offer and what that might look like we know um that the kind of entry level jobs are at highest risk uh, particularly in the retail uh, sector um and so the, our job now knowing that october november and recession the, the impact on, on, on the sector, um, which is, you know, I think we've, we've had it clarified the recent government announcements, is that those type of jobs, particularly our working age groups, are likely to face some serious and um, financial consequences and resulting redundancies. So our approach has been kind of from since August, uh, and a phased approach is to contact everyone that, you know, if they lost their jobs, they would be moving over to um, universal credit. 
So our yeah. focus has been actually making sure we've been in touch with everybody in the age group that's likely to be impacted to make sure that one, we're able to offer retraining, two, we can maximise um, you know, the, 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 their income through uh, support um, from another department of ours which deals mostly with um, benefits. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that kind of two pronged approach will help us a uh, one support residents to make sure that you know that they 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 they've got either you know retrain opportunities, two that they've they've maximised their income through the benefit system, and three, it actually helps us to mitigate the risks associated with them losing their jobs in terms of our income and arrears. Um, and again, it's very much join up approach with, with residents getting there early rather than wait for the incident to occur. Mm, okay, um, I'm interested to know, uh, as uh, an occupier, but also as um, a landlord, um, you know, clearly uh, all town centres are impacted uh, by uh, the, the lack of workers coming in, and many, many businesses are reviewing their office policy. Um, what's your view on how this is, gonna, you know, what's the long-term impact of this going to be on somewhere like Croydon? Uh, yeah. And, you know, as, as a landlord, how, how do you see, you know, are you considering how you might need to repurpose some of your commercial spaces? What's, what's your, your thinking on this at the moment? So I, th I think that, that there are two parts to that. I think I'll, I'll cover um, Optival's position perhaps as, as, a, as an occupier. Um, I think as, as a business, I say, I think we recognise, in fact, that there are some opportunities here that, you know, we should embrace. And it's mostly through the way that, that we work. We've done a number of surveys with our residents. And I don't think it's any different than the surveys carried out in, in different sectors where, you know, we, there's opportunity there to work remotely. And um, many of our staff um, believe actually, you know, their mental health, their well-being, because I think that's something that really needs to be recognised in this. It's not just about the ease and money you know, the money you save by working from home. It's also about the mental health and well-being. And, and so what we're finding is staff um, uh, most want to have some sort of blended approach. Um, and that is in recognition of actually, you know, happy to work from home. I can sustain this level of, of uh, performance. So the business is happy. But at the same time, I want the opportunity, albeit quite limited, to still interact with people in a safe way. Um, so what that kind of looks like for us, is you know in the, in in the short term certainly we're, we're looking at twenty percent um, you know um, occupancy in in our um, offices at max to, to enable us to work at COVID safe, um, but because of the recent announcement this week we're likely then to be reducing to much low numbers. Now, if you have to be absolutely in the office, do come in. Otherwise, if you can work from home, work from home. So we're very much following the advice um, of, 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 of government, despite it being guidance. Um, and then on the second thing um, around our own portfolio, uh, to be honest with you, I, I, um, there isn't much of a difference in terms of demand for offices pre-COVID and now. I think we still have the same uh, challenges and, you know, I think that's mostly to do with uh, our portfolio, our location. Um, I think in, in the long run, it's probably too early to say, um, but similar to us, um, it would make sense for most businesses to start thinking about, actually, you know, can we benefit and have a lower operating costs by moving to a much more flexible um, approach and then therefore reducing the, 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 the space that we use. And the only thing that perhaps could maybe stop that now is if we find a vaccine tomorrow and, yeah. you know, that, that, that thinking would not escalate further. But, you know, at the same time, I, I, I think, you know, there will certainly be the likelihood is that people will be start, starting to think about how do we actually, you know, um, optimise how we operate as a business by making more use of of um you know kind of remote working practices so um my feeling is that we'll probably as a as a sector re reduce our office space requirements um in in certainly the the, the long term because i see no other business to why you'd want to increase your space to allow for for covid with the uncertainty as to when we'd find a vaccine or not um, I'm just going to stop you a second. I, I, I should have probably should have said this to you before, but when you're looking at me, you're not looking at me. So oh, sorry. To look up. So, oh, sorry. so no, that's oh. all right. It's just um, which if, one? If should I look that's here? Looking me. That's looking at me now. You're looking at me. It feels. Yeah, I thought the camera was over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, sorry. Oh. 
Yeah, it's all right, it's fine. And it's not all the time. I just thought I'd stop you just to say that. So I'm just oh. going to finally move on to talk a little bit about, um, uh, you know, your, your thoughts about Croydon. So let me start with a question. Um, so, um, you know, Roma, you are a, a partner of Develop Croydon. Um, as a company uh, and as an individual, you do sit on our board. Uh, Develop Croydon, uh, obviously, in the current climate, has a big role to play in terms of, uh, you know, really communicating some positiveness about Croydon. Um, I'm really interested to know from you what you think you know, the challenges are, but maybe, in, you know, from a personal point of view, what do you think Croydon needs to do, um, you know, in, in the current place that we are? What would make a big difference, uh, in your view, to Croydon? So if you're thinking about, you know, kind of Croydon um, as, as a hub, um, you know, and, and kind of in the commercial sense, um, I was speaking with one of my colleagues earlier on, and, you know, we know that the retail uh, sector is heavily impacted. And, you know, this is a crisis that probably, you know, almost, we'd already had some challenges before COVID mm -hmm. and was has been magnified with, with, with COVID. Um, you know, I think the thing that's 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 missing there and and hasn't helped is the appetite for people to want want to spend money to to come out, mm -hmm. and, and and three, you know, the, the challenges that I think COVID presents makes it almost um, you know impossible to turn around the habits that we've started to to form um, during lockdown, which is to move to to kind of online um, shopping. Um, you know, I think in order for you know. Um, you know, kind of commercial side to, you know, benefit or, or somewhat change the current trend. It needs a very collaborative approach between many businesses um, and it may include, you know, the, the, the local authorities because right. what I think is, as, a, as a borough needs to happen is, you know, let's, you know, like just an example, you know, a shop might say, well, actually, I'm going to bring something very different to to uh, the retail sector in terms of technology and, you know, how, how we, we view, you know, fashion, for example. Mm. Um, but we've got to think about things like, all right, how accessible is transport system? How safe is it? How safe is the town centre? Um, you know, what's the kind of long-term strategy for things like, you know, safe streets and all that kind of stuff? So I, I think, you know, it, it would be good we could attract a lot more people to the borough and mm -hmm. to invest in whether it's businesses or whether it's people but it does need a collaborative approach to it and you know i'm, I'm not sure sure what the answer is but i think that's the answer to most things is that people mm -hmm. from different sectors have a conversation and yes, find yeah. that, that 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 solution because it's not about just one sector. i think there is that huge amount of interdependency um you know in order for you to get in 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 the heart of one consumers and and two you know, investors and and finally um you know what what is your sort of um i guess your ambition for uh both optivo uh but also the place croydon you know what would you like to see happen um in you know the next three? and i guess also your residents what you know what, what's your final thoughts on this well you know for, for us as an organization as i say Croydon Borough is is one of our, our, our key uh, you know strategic uh, boroughs. Um, so we've, we've got a number of developments in the pipeline. Um, we know there's a huge demand, particularly for res, uh, social housing as well as for affordable housing, and that's our core business. Um, so similar to all our core, core boroughs, we will invest the time the money to make sure that we are able to provide um, homes and, and communities, safe communities, to residents um, who are therefore unable or priced out of, of, of the market. Um, you know, so that's that's kind of, of my thoughts on, on Optiva as, as a business. What would be great and fantastic to see is, you know, the, the high streets are transformed into places that people want to actually visit, whether it's, you know, in, in this new COVID environment or not. Um, I think, you know, like like anything, I think if something looks nice, you're most likely to, to be attracted to it. And, you know, I think there's a bit of what's missing here perhaps is some creativity in the solutions, is, you know, rather than repeat what we've always done is maybe think about can we do this in a different way? Um, and, you know, we're marketing the borough in the right way. And, you know, it's those kind of things that I think would be quite useful. Um, you know, we know, we know the, the borough has been a slight decline, but the good news is that we're seeing, or, or certainly pre-COVID, we're seeing like, you know, some, some investment. Um, yeah, so that's right. it really.
Well, thank you very much, Rommel. It's been a pleasure yeah. uh, talking with you. Uh, so thanks to Rommel, who is Commercial Director uh, at Optivo Housing. Thanks very much. Thank you, Kevin.